Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and two upsetting things have happened recently. One, I just trimmed my beard this morning, and now it's too short, which is really upsetting. And two, I just recently sold my car. Now, my car is a Mark IV Golf R32, or it was, because it's not mine anymore. I bought it in 2010 and loved it for a long time, but unfortunately, it's getting a bit old and worn out lately, much like me. Now, it's 3.2 litre V6, which I modified quite a bit, so it sounded really nice drove really well and was just a lot of fun to have so I was very sad about having to sell it but it was getting rusty around the edges and would have cost thousands of pounds in order to fix and that was making me sad because I didn't want to spend that money and then not know whether I would get it back or not so I ended up selling it because frankly we don't need two cars and so now I'm driving my wife's car instead and it's miserable and it's nowhere near as much fun and because I didn't have enough money to splash back into a, something else that I'd enjoy, I instead decided to spend that money on bits for my YouTube channel. So I bought a few different things, one of which includes this lightsaber-looking light, which is basically an RGB light that you can use in your setup. Now, I'm actually using this for different purposes, and lighting is so important. But I want to talk about why this Amran light is particularly useful for me, and I'll show you that in a bit. The other thing I bought, or two things, is that you might have seen already, is this tripod and camera setup that I just recently showed off in a Razer video where I was doing a top-down shot or an angle of the keyboard that I was testing and showing the setup for that. And I've also upgraded my camera. I've been wanting to do this for a while, I've been putting it off though, but now I'm moving to Sony, at least for one of my cameras, because I do have multiple cameras in my setup. Traditionally, I've been using the Panasonic Lumix cameras, the GH4, GH5, and the GH6, but I've wanted to move to Sony because they've apparently got better picture quality, better low light capabilities, and better autofocus as well. So this is a Sony camera, which is full frame, which means that I need new lenses. So as you can see, that's probably gonna be pretty expensive. And I can tell you it has been pretty expensive because one of the lenses was a thousand pounds on its own. So the camera itself, I'll link to that in the description so you can see how much it is in your area, is also a small fortune, but it has been a pretty nice upgrade. Although I need new batteries, new lenses, and other things to think about. So one, sort of interesting upgrade to my setup, which maybe you will have noticed. It also comes with some interesting highlights, like this little furry windshield. You'll notice that it's in white, which is actually surprisingly difficult to get in England. And I had to wait for it to come from Hong Kong, but I managed to get it cheaper than the standard black one, which was quite nice. And I really do like white peripherals, as you might have gathered. Now, I also bought myself a 50 millimeter 1.8 prime lens, which is basically a small macro lens of sorts that allow me to get those really nice shots because I've always tried to get these sort of really nice clean shots of products, close-up shots and things. So what I was trying to do was find lenses that are equivalent to the lenses that I already had with my Lumix cameras, so something that would give some good nice shots there. I've got a couple of macro lenses I've been using for a while, but obviously they won't work on this camera because it's full frame rather than micro four thirds, so it's quite a change which means a lot more expense and investment, perhaps unnecessarily. Maybe people haven't even noticed, but if you've watched in my recent videos, you will have seen shots with this camera. And also this lens, which is a gargantuan zoom lens, and I didn't really realize quite how big it is. And that's the thing that's interesting about full frame versus micro four thirds is that the full frame lenses are significantly larger much much larger but this lens is multifunctional it's a 24 to 70 zoom lens and there's some really nice highlights to it because it's full frame when you actually go through the zoom from 24 to 70 you don't lose any f-stops so with my old cameras if you use a zoom lens like that when you zoom all the way in you actually lose some f-stop which means it's dark which means you need more lighting to compensate for it so there's a sort of a lot of tricky things to making videos and doing things like that to end up with some good results. The other thing that I spent a lot of money on and a stupid amount of money is this Edelkrone Tripod X, which is a motorized tripod, which as you can see is capable of doing these up and down movements, which in theory are really smooth. You can basically just press a button and it will go up or it will go down, but you can also customize where it goes to by just pressing these buttons really easily, which means that you can easily reposition it. 
And I wanted this tripod for multiple reasons. One, I really like Edelchrome products. And two, I wanted to be able to do these smooth shots, which you might have seen in some of the videos. I've tried to do these historically by just using my hands and carefully lowering the tripod with Manfrotto tripods, but it's never worked that well. Whereas this Tripod X is extendable, as you can see, so it's pretty hefty and heavy and sort of durable. And you can lay it out either really wide feet or quite close together and then have adjustable height from that. It has some really smooth action, as you just saw from those shots as well. And what I wanted to be able to do was to combine that maybe with a slider or the tilt heads that you can see in the background that I'll show you in a second to end up with some even nicer shots. The other reason I like this is one of the things I've always hated when making my videos is having to mess about with tripod feet constantly to adjust it to get it to the right height for various different things. So this in theory makes life easier because you can easily adjust it. The other thing you can do is you can adjust the height of each lead indivi individually so that you can actually tilt it in a certain direction. So there's three legs and you can basically cycle through the controls and then adjust the height of them so you can have it tilt forward or backwards or sideways. And then you can use that in a shot. It has a time-lapse capability so that if you have a, a camera when you're doing time-lapse photographs, you can make it sort of pivot and take photos at the same time. And then you could end up with a nice result like that. Now, I don't use it for that at the moment. And there are some things that aren't great about the tripod. It doesn't work with their app yet, for example. So that's a bit of a problem. Whereas the slider, which you can see panning around here, does. And you can easily set that up for some really nice shots. And you would have seen that previously. So if you've only seen these shots where I do this sort of side to side movement where it looks really smooth, that's actually on the slider and this pan and tilt head as well that allows you to easily sort of adjust the movement and create some nice shots with that. And I've really loved that Edelchrome product for a long time. Again, something I spent a lot of money on. Now, the other nice thing about this camera setup and the lens is that you've got a very smooth action on the zoom. So I can do this in and out zoom on things with the lens itself. Now, you could obviously do that with keyframing and cropping on the footage. But what you'd be doing there is obviously negating the quality because you'd be cutting down on the number of pixels and it wouldn't look as good. Whereas with this zoom, you can actually do it manually and you can zoom all the way in. The other thing is this camera actually has a digital zoom on it, which also doesn't take away from the quality. So it maintains that same video quality even when you're using the digital zoom. So a combination of those two and you can make for some really smooth shots. The other thing that's really clever about this camera is you see the two white bars down the middle of the viewfinder that actually shows you where the shot will be for um, vertical video. So you can line that up and it's 16 by 9 format. So it basically shows where the TikTok or YouTube short would be. And then you can just crop that video down in your video editor and have it look like you set it up. So you can basically line things up nicely where you're recording two videos at the same time, but you're not, you're just recording one, but then you know where it's going to end up and how it's going to end up looking. So there's loads of nice features to this, as well as an improved quality, better autofocus, and these sort of smooth zooms. So the combination of the lens, the camera, and the tripod mean that I can end up with some really nice shots. But the other thing I wanted to do was for the top-down shots, I wanted to improve the lighting. So I actually have bought this Amran light, which I saw some reviews of and I really wanted. This is an Aperture Light and it's an RGB one, but it's pretty funky in some ways. You've already seen it looks like a lightsaber at the beginning, but basically this is a, a light with its own built-in battery, which is removable and it has customizable lighting settings so that you can either use it for color or just various different intensities and you can adjust the warmth so I can get it to match the color temperature of my camera for much nicer lighting. So the problem that I've had historically is I've got lights on either side, so I've got a big light behind me and then a light off to the left as well. But sometimes some products are really dark, so I needed something where you could light it from above really easily, but not overpower it and get these reflections on there. Also, maybe just to have sometimes some interesting RGB colors in there. You can scroll through and adjust the intensity and the hue and the saturation on the thing directly and it has an app which I'll show you in a second so you can customize that lighting and basically tweak that and then easily adjust it on the fly and this is actually one of those purchases that I'm really happy with. 
I've had a few really exciting purchases. This one wasn't anywhere near as expensive as the other things. If you look at the Tripod X, for example, you see it cost a small fortune. However, there was a bargain on that where you could buy it in February and then wait for April for it to arrive, which I did. So I had to wait a while for it to turn up. And then I got this small rig clamp. So small rig have these little offerings of random things that you can buy that are actually pretty handy for content creators. So if you're into any of those things, I'd recommend looking at small rig products actually because they're pretty affordable. But basically this is a clamp and arm system which allows you to put cameras on it or microphones and then adjust into different positions. And I thought I would use this for mounting the light to my rig system. And this means that you can put it... So this light has mounting points on it and that was another reason I wanted it at both ends where you can easily mount it to a standard thread either on a tripod or or on a system like this where you've got a clamp to it and then it will just clamp to whatever surface you can clamp it to which in my case happens to be this large bar that runs across the top of my desk so I've got this other setup with basically uh, two C stands at one end and then two bars running across the middle where my camera's mounted so that's how you see these top down views using the Lumix GH5 adjust that into position and then I can put the light above it and this light has actually added a surprising benefit to the setup and I think it's added some pretty clean shots it does get in the way a little bit of being able to see what I'm doing but you can easily adjust it with these clamps and move it into a different position so you can put it on the bar put it near the camera and have it glowing down onto the desk the downside obviously is because it's straight on top that can lead to reflections sometimes but because you can adjust the intensity of it and because it's diffused a little bit it's not too bad so as you see it just hooks over this pro aim rig system which i have above there which is another good purchase that i made so a lot of youtubers will tell you that you can't necessarily get successful by having better gear and i certainly wouldn't say that the gear has been the key to doing well but it has helped and this top down rig really makes my life a lot easier especially for the build videos and for unboxing videos you've got a really nice clean top down shot and now with some better lighting and because it has multiple mounting points on it as you can see and with the clamps you can basically just put other things on there really easily so in theory microphones can go on there which i have done in the past multiple cameras for different angles or in this case just some extra lighting to add to the scene and to improve it and with those clamps i can easily adjust that lighting as well and put it into a different position if i want to and you could also throw in some rgb into there so the thing has an app on it that allows you to control the lighting you can adjust the color remotely from it but mostly for the most part i've just been using it for some diffused dim top-down lighting to help with the other lights so there's not too much shadow being cast by the things because that's the other thing with the big light behind me and the other light off to the left sometimes the product just ends up with a big shadow on it which doesn't look ideal but because you can remotely control this you can just dim that down a bit and then you can have a nice bit of sort of backlighting to it and ends up making it look nice and also my hands aren't blown out which is also good so the issue i had historically was putting too much light on there man my hands would end up looking real pale which isn't ideal <laughs> There is one downside to this system though, and that's just how noisy the Tripod X is, which is insanely loud. So here it is at full volume, just to give you an idea of that. But otherwise, hopefully an interesting insight into what goes on behind the scenes in Pornland. Check out the full playlist down below to see more of these sorts of videos. Thanks for watching.